Over the last 10 years, I've been working on passive solar greenhouse design. I'm going to take you through my latest design, which I call the greenhouse of the future, which combines a root cellar, a commercial kitchen, and yes, a passive solar greenhouse. Tomorrow, Wednesday, March 28th at 1230 Mountain Standard Time, I'm going to be delivering a webinar on how you can design your very own passive solar greenhouse just like this one. I'm going to be delivering the webinar with Curtis Stone, and we're going to be talking about not just how to design a passive solar greenhouse, but how to monetize it. So you're going to be able to take a greenhouse like this or your own variation of it and monetize your backyard so that you can leave the rat race and start to get a supplementary income trading your desk for dirt. Take a look at the video. Let me know what you think. And I'll put the link to the webinar in the show notes below so that if you want to sign up absolutely free, you're more than welcome to do it. I also welcome your comments and hit the like button if you really found this interesting. Thanks so much. Have a great day. In this video, I'm going to take you through the design of the passive solar greenhouse, commercial kitchen, and root cellar. This greenhouse is the result of about 10 years of thinking about passive solar greenhouses, so I'm pretty excited to share it with you. Over the years, I've been thinking about how to make passive solar greenhouses better. And a lot of thought has gone into how to create integrated design. As you're probably aware, I teach permaculture design for a living. And one of the main premises behind permaculture design is that design, and especially good design, is not the roof, the rain barrel, or the solar panel, but the connections between them. So when I went to go and design this greenhouse, I was specifically looking for ways to create unique connections with multiple spaces that had complementary needs and yields. So as an example, the root cellar wants to stay cold all year round. However, even though it wants to stay at about 4 degrees Celsius or about 38 degrees Fahrenheit, in the wintertime when it's minus 20, 30, or 40 degrees Celsius outside, that 4 degrees Celsius that the root cellar is uh, kept at is actually a heat source or a potential heat source for a greenhouse. In addition to that, the root cellar itself actually wants to get rid of its air on a regular basis because as vegetables are stored in root cellars, they off-gas and so they can create an anoxic environment. Now that anoxic environment happens to be something that plants are interested in. And so the design of this root cellar greenhouse commercial kitchen combination allowed for the use of earth tubes, which could pull cold air in the wintertime and preheat it for the root cellar and warm air in the summertime and pre-cool it for the summertime. And that cold air that it's preheating in the wintertime would go into the root cellar, refresh the air, and then that stale air in the root cellar we'd be pushed into the greenhouse providing a bit of a heat source and some co2 that the plants could use for photosynthesizing and in the summertime the reverse would be true so so if we were pulling air through the earth tubes all winter long the ground that the earth tubes were buried in would slowly uh, be surrounded in permafrost and so we'd essentially be storing ice all winter long in order to store coolth or cold in the ground that could then be drawn down in the summertime with the reverse being true in the summer. So in the summertime, we'd be bringing hot air through those earth tubes, which would uh, pre-cool because of the stored cold from the winter, um, keeping the root cellar cold and then pre-charging the ground with warmth for the upcoming winter time. And so the ground acts as a seasonal heat and cold storage. So having the earth tubes drive the root cellar and then having the root cellar drive at least part of the heat uh, requirement for the greenhouse made a ton of sense. Now this greenhouse is going to be constructed next to a uh, hyper energy efficient house. And so one of the design criteria for this greenhouse was that there was to be a commercial kitchen so that food produced in the greenhouse could be moved to the kitchen, preserved, and then moved down into the root cellar. Having said that, if you wanted to run this greenhouse as a microgreens operation, it would work incredibly well. So you could grow your microgreens in the passive solar greenhouse. You could harvest them in the kitchen and do all of your soil prep and tray prep and pre-growing. 
and then you could actually store the microgreens down in the root cellar. And if you found that the root cellar wasn't quite cold enough, you could put an additional refrigeration unit down there to bring it down the last few degrees that you might need to keep the microgreens in good condition. So this greenhouse brings all of those elements together because they're mutually beneficial. And that's really what I was trying to get with this greenhouse. And I think I've achieved it. So you may decide to use this for your homestead. You could use this for your microgreens operation or your urban farm, or you could use it for your large scale farm. It's really up to you. The shell itself uh, can be used for any number of purposes. It's really up to you to figure out what you want to put on the inside of this. So let's go through a few photos now and just look at a couple more illustrations. So here's the inside of the greenhouse, one of the cross sections. And so you can see the cross section of the greenhouse. I currently have it planted with a tropical food forest. There's a wood fired hot tub right here, which provides thermal mass as well as a heat source for the greenhouse and as well as a place to hang out. You'll notice that we have a subterranean heating and cooling system that's running under the surface and it's storing thermal energy through the day. And you'll notice that it's pulling air from the hottest point in the greenhouse and then it's letting it back into the greenhouse at that bottom point. We have a nice tall knee wall right here. We've got operable windows at the top and the bottom. Our commercial kitchen is right in the middle and our root cellar is down below grade to keep it nice and cool. You'll notice that this illustration is in the design tool and I had this drawn so that people could understand how these subterranean heating and cooling systems are built. So you'll notice there's the pipes along the bottom and then the pipes are offset. And this is what we do in order to maximize heat gain or storage in the soil medium when we're building a subterranean heating and cooling system. Mm -hmm.